العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين حبيب إله العالمين أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين لا سيما بقية الله في الأرضين إمامنا وسيدنا الحجة بن الحسن المهدي أرواح العالمين له الفدا Respected brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I sincerely congratulate you on the arrival of the month of Rajab, the month of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All the months belong to Allah, but Rajab specifically is the month of Allah. And I also congratulate you on the birth of these two shining stars of Ahlul Bayt. Al-Imam Muhammad Al-Baqir alayhi salam and Al-Imam Ali Al-Hadi alayhi salam. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shower us with his blessings and mercy by the blessings of these two Imams. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us their shafa'ah. Indeed, the month of Rajab is that spiritual month that prepares us for the full mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As you think of the month of Ramadan and the nights of Qadr and what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will write for you on those nights, remember the month of Rajab. Because from now you prepare for Laylatul Qadr. Some people decide to think about Laylatul Qadr on that day before or when Laylatul Qadr starts. We may have missed the boat if that's how we view Laylatul Qadr. The preparation for Laylatul Qadr starts from these days, the month of Rajab. And then you have Sha'ban, and then you embrace the month of Ramadan. That's how we prepare for that beautiful month of fasting. The month of Rajab has many virtues, my dear brothers and sisters. It is one of the sacred months, Al-Ashhur Al-Hurum. We have four sacred months, Rajab, Dhul Qa'da, Dhul Hijjah, and Muharram. Rajab is one of those sacred months in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us in the Holy Quran not to oppress others and not to oppress ourselves in this month. Make it a goal, my dear brothers and sisters, not to oppress yourselves in this month of Rajab. And the way we can achieve that is by avoiding all sins. Because every sin is an act of injustice against your own self before others. It is the month of forgiveness. Every single day, at least 70 times, say, Astaghfirullah wa atubu ilayh. Oh Allah, forgive me. Purify me through your tawbah. Purify me with repentance. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answers our prayers. One of the beautiful deeds of the month of Rajab is to say 1,000 times La ilaha illallah throughout the month. Throughout the entire month, make it a goal to say 1,000 times La ilaha illallah. It doesn't make, take, take much time to say it. You know what the reward for that is? The reward for saying La ilaha illallah 1,000 times in Rajab, the hadith states, Allah will give you 100,000 hasanat, 100,000 good deeds. Allah just wants to forgive us because indeed He is Arham al Rahimin. And the hadith states Allah will grant you 100 cities in heaven, not palaces, villas, cities, 100 entire cities in heaven for saying this beautiful statement. Now someone can say, what do I want to do with all these cities in heaven? Habibi, heaven's for eternity. It does not end. It's infinite. Every city has its own features that you want to explore for infinity. You can achieve this in the beautiful month of Rajab. In fact, the name for Rajab is Al-Asab. That's the description for it. Because the Rahmah of Allah pours on you. 
let's not forget the virtues of the month of Rajab. And one of the most important deeds is also to fast. Fasting in the month of Rajab, at least for a day. If you cannot fast other days, at least for one day. Fast in the month of Rajab. The hadith states on the day of judgment in heaven, there is a river called Rajab. This river, the water that it contains, it's wider than snow. And it's sweeter than honey. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared it for the one who fasts at least one day in Rajab. So these are amazing virtues we should consider as we are starting this blessed month. Now my dear brothers and sisters, the month of Rajab begins with the birth of Al-Imam Muhammad Al-Baqir alayhi salam. This great Imam and leader of Ahlul Bayt. The one who officially established the first university in the school of Ahlul Bayt. So many people graduated from the school of Al-Imam Al-Baqir alayhi salam. And he's called Al-Baqir because he split knowledge open. It's as if knowledge was closed in a container and Al-Imam Al-Baqir alayhi salam opened that container. That container of infinite knowledge given to him by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'll share with you one word of advice from Imam Al-Baqir alayhi salam. Imam Al-Baqir teaches us how to manage our anger. My dear brothers and sisters, one of the problems we have in our lives, especially in our family life, with friends, with family members at work is anger. When we rage and anger overtakes us. The Imam gives us a beautiful recommendation here. The Imam السلام, states, when you feel that you're consumed by anger and you're standing, sit down. That blocks the shaitan from infusing you with further anger. That is how you control and manage your anger. Now for centuries, people did not know why this was so effective. Modern science has discovered why, subhanAllah. Scientists today have discovered that the human brain has been programmed to recognize threat when you're in an upright standing position. Any being, whether a human being or even animals, when you come under attack, your natural response is to stand up, to defend yourself. Have you seen someone attacked and they just sit down? You naturally stand up to defend yourself. So the brain associates the standing position with threats. That's why when you're standing and you get angry, there is a rush of adrenaline that pumps your veins and it makes you make very bad mistakes. I know people who've made very bad mistakes because of moments of anger. Hitting a loved one, breaking something, hurting yourself, sometimes killing others, making bad decisions that you have to suffer from for the rest of your life. Moments of anger like that, sit down. When you sit down, you tell your brain to calm down. It's okay, I can manage it. This is beautiful advice from Al-Imam Muhammad Al-Baqir alayhi salam. In another hadith, and I conclude with this one, the Imam alayhi salam captures an interesting conversation that happened between Prophet Nuh and Iblis, Satan, after the flood. In this hadith, there was a discussion on when shaitan is closest to Bani Adam, to the human being. So he tells Prophet Nuh, I am closest to the human being in three areas. Beware. When shaitan gives you advice, <laughs> take that, right? <laughs> Not in other areas, just take this one advice. He's telling Prophet Nuh, I'm closest to the human being in these three areas. The first one, in moments of anger. When you rage, you basically invite the shaitan to almost control you. That's the first moment. The second moment, when you're about to judge between two people, you're about to pass a judgment. That's where shaitan comes and he whispers to you to be biased, to use your own personal desires and preferences to pass a judgment. Whenever you're about to pass a judgment, remember this hadith. Make sure you're being objective, you're not oppressing any side. And the third one, 
when you are alone with the opposite gender privately. The shaitan says, in those moments, I am closest to Bani Adam. Now, by the way, these days, we have new types of being alone with the opposite gender. Sometimes physically, you're with the opposite gender in an enclosed environment. And sometimes on social media, in private chats. Don't think the shaitan is not the third when you're chatting with the opposite gender and it's vain talk. It's nothing purposeful. It's not professional. It's not useful. Who am I harming, Sayyid? It's okay, I'm just chatting. We're just having a good time. Just joking around a little bit. Breaking the ice. Okay. Listen to the advice that shaitan gives to Prophet Nuh He says, I'm closest to you in those moments. So my dear brothers and sisters, once again, I congratulate you on the arrival of this blessed month of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept our a'mal and our deeds. It is in these months that we truly prepare for the akhirah and we elevate our spirituality. Inshallah, you all have long lives, but we, never, we, we don't know if we'll have the opportunity to experience another Rajab. So make this the most unique and wonderful month of Rajab, inshallah. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.